Thank you for staying with us. It's another installment of Beyond the Headlines. And this morning, we're getting interactive as usual. We'll be crossing over to find out what exactly is happening in the northern region by way of the flooding. And uh, when it gets to that point, we'll be getting uh, in touch with our correspondents there. We'll also be talking about a myriad other matters. We start in the studio with Onassis Kobi, who is Deputy Youth Organizer of the NDC in the Ashanti region. He joins the conversation. Just so you know, uh, we've actually uh, roped in some members of the NPP as well to join the conversation to ensure balance. Uh, that person uh, is yet to get here as and when that is possible. We shall also connect with that person to ensure that we are able to have a full conversation. I'm not going to mention the person's name for certain uh, reasons. So, Anastas, no, a very good morning well, to you. Good morning. Why would you want, do you want to mention No, 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 no. I mean, There are certain reasons. What the last should? time you what, came what, what on, I should? the last I mean, time you came on, there were justifiable the, reasons carriage for, was, was for Carriage Nobi. Yeah, yeah. And he explained reasons, I'm not going to put on air, but reasons that you understand. So, yeah, that let's, on security. let's, the other that that on, on security. security. Yeah. Now, to security issue, I mean, Let's, they, let's they, leave they, it at that. They, they are being lazy. No, no, no. Who is being lazy? The, the MPP they, administration? Their communicators are being lazy. I mean, because they are, they are either running away from debates, just like the, the uh, director of communication did on Joy News yesterday, or they are late for events. And for me, it doesn't give good image. It's not helping. I'm not going to go down that line because yeah. you're doing this uh, I mean, from a certain angle. But to be fair to them, like I mentioned, when Courage Nobi uh, was tardy yeah. in arriving on this show, this was a few days ago, yeah. he had very good reason. And, yeah. and you know that reason, and it's a reason we can't put on, yeah. on air. Uh, there, are reasons, again, there are reasons why we are all charging them to be up and doing. I mean, there are reasons any Ghanaian suffers. These are security. These well, at least we have, we have you here. Bagrari and I mean, all those stuff. We, I mean, I sympathize with them, but except, yes, I mean, if, if they run the nation in a way that we all feel comfortable and safe, I think these things will not be happening. On uh, so let's, let's, I mean, let's link it let's from here. I, I am not going to, we shouldn't, you know, play <laughs> I, the ball I, in a I, I understand. Way I understand. You, should, you should be alarmed. You should be concerned because you see, what it is, they, they need to account to the people. Mm. And these are some of the forums that they could, I mean, mm. help. You, 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 there will be an opportunity for you to interrogate them and to account to the people. Mm. And for me, they should be the first to even arrive here. Yeah. They should, they, because they have a lot of issues to deal with. I mean, the opposition political party is just supposed to aid in, in accounting to the people. Mm. So if people tax people and they are being paid trust me they, they know how to draw them. i wouldn't know the details they of that do. but likely they, they, they likely know. you would now let's 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 move from there and and focus more on security related matters you've already started the conversation on the back yeah. of that in in recent times we've had quite a lot to wrap our heads around yeah. i mean from murders killings we had uh, the journalist who yeah. in recent times um suffered a very horrid uh, fate uh, we have the Abyssin case in point, and most recently the one where on the Bwipe, uh, you know, stretch, we also had those people who were attacked. It's creating quite um, a scene, especially as we have a new IGP opposed, Dr. Dampari, uh, who is also grappling with all of these dynamics. When you cast your eyes over the security, you know, situation in the country, what exactly do you see? Well, well uh, not, not just to give a grooming picture about what is happening. I think uh, the, the citizenry is concerned about the situation, the, the, the security situation, the system. And for me, I mean, I don't know whether we're living on, in heaven now because uh, the past IGP, they tell us that uh, we, we don't expect a crime-free society in that we are not living on, uh, in heaven. Mm. So we expect to see some of these killings and uh, some of this ritual murder that is going on. F what is happening? Yes, they might not be any different from what we have seen in the past, but the rate and the prevalence of what is happening now is quite alarming. And 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 uh, uh, looking at the posture of the new IGP now uh, is quite assuring except one is cautious that these things are not grandstanding because i mean he, he is an acting igp he, he has issues to confront with 
and he's not new to the system though but then he is in the helm of affairs at the, at, at the moment and he, there's a need for him to stand these murders and these armed robberies i mean and and, and for us to have a, a, a security uh, assuring society so for me his posture at the moment is quite good we've seen some arrests and then we, we've seen some soups and 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 we 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 see some actions being done, even on the back of uh, that yeah. international journalist. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, I mean we've, we've, we've had swoops, we've had people arrested, yes, yes. Uh, and and all of that. There have yes. been some robbers who have been shot, yeah. and uh, on the back of some of these incidents. Yeah. So at least you're seeing positive signs. Yes, I mean what we are seeing and what is being reported in the news, the daily feed from the police outfit mm -hmm. is quite assuring. And just like I said, you just have to be cautious that these things are not grandstanding because. I mean, he's an acting IGP. He would want to be confirmed, and and he seems to be enjoying the goodwill of the people from the media and others. Mm -hmm. Look, it's early days yet. He's a fine gentleman. We've had good testimonies about him. We can only hope he does what is best for us because we need this country safe. You can't. People are being shot. You, you recently heard of the bright uh, international CEOs shooting. People are being shot, killed anyhow. And for us, Ghanaians, if for nothing at all, if they will not give us even what is it that we will live comfortably as people of Ghana, I mean, our three square meals a day, at least we need our peace. We need to enjoy our peace. That we need it. So how they, they are approaching it, yes, we, we can only wish that more arrests have been done. We can only really wish that the, the crime it's, 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 it's the not rate of crime it, must, must, must go down. It, 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 it is not, it's not good for us to be... Uh, look, the international community is going to look at us um, because Ghana has been a tourist hub. Mm. I mean, they're free to come here. One of the reasons why we attract tourists I mean, into this country and we reckon more revenue from tourism is because of the peaceful nature. But it's not, it's not. It, so one thing that stands out for me is uh, you know, apart from everything that the acting IGP has been doing, the fact that he's offered psychological help exactly. to some of these people, you know, yeah. counseling and yeah. all of that, I feel that is uh, quite a, a bit of a novelty and something that some of us have called for yeah. in the past. But let's not also paint the picture as though this were some unique yeah. happening. I mean, we've had incidents in this country, even under your administration, yeah. where yeah, there have yeah, been, yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, periods of insecurity, so yeah. to speak. The robberies, the attacks on whether bullion vans, like we recall a few yeah. months back, and that police officer, Emmanuel, uh, losing his life, uh, you know, assaults on motorbikes, like we are seeing in some yeah. parts of the North, where in fact they are trying to ban the use of motorbikes. Uh, these killings, attacks yeah. on buses, and all of that, these are not things that we are seeing for the first time. These are things that have happened over the years. Of course, sometimes there's an uptick in crime, and we all talk about it. But I believe we also shouldn't paint the picture as though this were a novelty. It isn't. No, but you see, you also will not give an excuse to have it happen. Mm. You, you, you always want to also challenge yourself to confront the situations and just deal with them. I mean, we're growing. Mm. You, you can't always be comfortable that, yes, because it's been happening. It's exactly why people were so much angered by the pronouncement of the former IGP. Mm. I mean, it's more or less like giving a justification to what is really happening. We know crimes have been happening in first world countries. They, they also strive to also have those things dealt with. So what is it that we can do with a population of 32 million? Um, we, we, we can also do better. The thing is that, the, the, yes, of course, it's because of the proliferation of the media and the, 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 the prominence of some of these issues are yes, in, 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 right in our face. So that's why maybe people think, it, but it's in the, on the rise. People fear for their lives. I mean, people have expressed a lot of worrying situations about these, some of these things. So the thing is that it's happening. How do we do it? They can do it. Our police over the years have, have demonstrated the fact that they can do it. They know mm -hmm. some of these guys. When, when they, they move into action, we've seen, we've witnessed the arrests that have been made, the, the, the killing of these gen, international journalists has seen to some arrests made. And for me, yes, it's also behoves on some of us, the citizens, right, to also help assist the police because we can we can help by giving information we live with these people they are around us so we can also help by giving and the police also keeping faith with the people not to also blow their cover when people come to them with with, 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 with confidential information and for this 
and we want to trust and we can only urge the police motivate them and also assist them by way of giving them information to have our peace in this country the 306 murders uh, recorded so far in, in in this year alone those that have been confirmed to be uh, murders is that a great cause for worry as far as you are concerned as far as your party is concerned i mean it's a great cause for i mean it's all but have we lost the plot the security plot well i mean to the extent that these things have happened and the number is quite huge it's, it's alarming uh, and i i think we they they, they, they lost the ball uh, on on the way and today we, we've seen Daily, we 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 reading about these serial murders, and uh, I mean the, what you also term as ritual murders, because when you listen to the accounts, it's mostly linked to a certain quest to be raised to see for a, a spiritual or whatever, and these things have been happening. Look, it talked about these homicides that are, that has to do with husbands killing their wives, battery, and all those ones, but we was also see a phenomenon where young people are moving in to sacrifice their fellow human beings for ritual uh, I mean, purposes. And for me, it's alarming. And one needs to be worried. Uh, we, 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 may, we may not even have full view of what really has been happening. People not reporting the death of their loved ones. People having traveled out of their, 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 their hometowns or their, their neighborhood and cannot be traced. All these things have not been accounted for. I think there are quite a number of them that are not being reported to us. So the, the, the phenomenon is really, really worrying. And uh, I think the, the, the police need to do a lot about that. There's a need to check on these uh, uh, initiators of these murders. And those are the, the, the very uh, religious or uh, uh, spiritual heads that cause for some of these things to be done. I mean, I get. I need a human head, I need a human part and all those things. And, and that's another angle to the conversation, yes, isn't it? Because yes. people have also said that, uh, you know, the, the NCA, among other bodies, need to be looking at the sort of content on our televisions. Exactly. You know that over time there's been that proliferation of, yeah. you know, people performing all kinds of, let me say, tricks, sometimes magic, uh, you know, on live television. And it appears it's becoming a trend from the Kaswa incident. Well, it's not exactly Kaswa. I think you could say Amam from around Kaswa. Yeah, the, the, uh, the, 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 the ten year old yeah. who was killed by those two yeah, boys. Friends and among among others. Even before you would realize that Takradi the the girls. The girls. So you would see that there's a sort of trend, yeah. you know, something happening in there that we really or to forestall. How, how do we go about it? it it's, it's on live television. And interestingly, you see some of them, like in the Yaman from uh, yeah. area, they will be telling you that, oh, we saw this on television, and uh, this person yeah. said we, we should bring this and that, and we'll, we'll get assistance. Very quickly, how do you feel we can address that situation? Ben, I mean, there's the, the, the need to, uh, uh, for the NCA to be in action. Um, uh, virtually uh, all I mean, prominent spiritual heads own poly, uh, TV station now, or they either own a TV station or a radio station, where 24/7 they, they they are selling their product. And what do they sell? I mean, calling on people to 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 attend to their services, and uh, and they, it, it it comes in exchange for something. Oftentimes, it has to be bring. Human, uh, uh, body, human parts and all of that. body parts, and I mean, real, real stuff that, that they call for. And looking at the, 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 the hunger in the system, not justification, though, hunger in the system, the quest for people to be rich overnight. These young guys are, uh, are unguided and they, 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 they go into these things, and which eventually do not even work because I, I don't subscribe to some of these, the, 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 these things. These are what we are being faced with. And for me, the call has come in time and time again that there's a need for the NCA to step in, just step in and sanitize our airways so that, I mean, uh, some of these things will, 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 will not, because we've not been seen yet. They might have been on the quiet on a few spots, but now it's becoming a daily I mean, feed in, in, in our news items. And for me, it, it, it is worrying.
Let me put this to you. Sometimes uh, we have politicians, so to speak, and you represent a political yeah, party, so you would do a certain line. We have some of you come here and uh, paint a certain picture. And it may sound a bit political, of course, we are talking about national issues, but let me put this to you. As a communicator for your party, what do you feel your party would do differently in a time like this? Uh, th these are not situations that are unique to this current administration or even to this IGP. He has inherited a whole lot that he's trying to deal with. Very briefly, in about a minute, what do you think your party would have done differently? What, 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 what we would do differently is, is, is to task uh, the, the, the mandated bodies to be at work, i.e., we, we've spoken about the NC, the need for the NC to sanitize our airwaves. Yes, they need to move in quickly. There, there's, a, there's a need for the police to be retooled. There, I mean, we, they, we have a situation where the police were uh, promised uh, uh, what you call bulletproof vests, and the reality is that they are not existing. Uh, the, the police need to be, because these guys, these are, are armed men who can, are come in fully armed and sometimes more sophisticated than the police, what the police even have in here. So there's a need to also read to the police. Those are some of the things that we will do. And then also keep, the, the, because at the end of the day, is assuring the citizen that you are safe. Right. And they're feeling that they are safe. All these feedbacks and the anger in the system are not coming from politicians. They are the people, the only people who are talking about it because they, they live it and they feel it. So it's not like a political party having seen it somewhere and, and creating a situation of insecurity in the system. The insecurity are being felt by the very people in this country. So for me, that's what we're going to do and that's what we need to do. The, 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 the mandated institutions ought to be working. Okay. And that's what it, it, it has got nothing to do with. And they see MPP because mm. the crime has no political power. Well, uh, well like power I was saying, you would speak from the nationalistic end of things, but of course, it, it will also suit your political interests. No, but and, and that is a reality. The, the that, is, that is not something no, we can what, run what, away what, from. What, what, I mean, when, when uh, we're talking uh, about uh, fix the country, for example, yes, we all want the country yeah, fixed in different yeah. ways, even if we have to fix ourselves as well. But uh, your party also. Benefited but in the problem ways. we always so, have in so this let's, let's, let's put it in no, the right but, but you see, the problem is we, have all, we have always had in this mm. country is, mm. is we tend to look at the, 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 the political parties rather than even the message that is coming out. Mm. Yes, what I've said, anybody with a nationalistic thinking will say, say. Okay, all right. Except it's coming from an NDC person, and an NDC MPP person will find it difficult to. Okay. Well, this point well made there, but you spoke about retooling, uh, you know, our security services, and indeed, uh, this administration has done some work in that respect. I mean, from vehicles, other logistics, and all of that. But that have we I done enough? Let's done get that. on Zoom and interact with security analyst uh, Adib Sani, who joins uh, the conversation uh, now. Adib, a very uh, good morning to you. Thank you for joining the conversation. Good morning, my brother, and good morning to your studio guest. Great. It's been quite a while. It's refreshing to speak to you after so long. Absolutely. Great to meet you again, my brother. Great. So, so let's hit the nail on the head. We have uh, quite a number of issues to deal with. 306 murders so far in the year, and more keep happening. Even in recent times, we heard of that assault uh, on the Buipe uh, stretch, the Tamale Buipe stretch. We've had that international journalist who has unfortunately been slain. We see these, uh, so to speak, ritual killings of sorts continuing uh, to happen. What can you say about the current state of security and what do you see with well, the things you see being done? Are we doing enough? Well, um, first of all, let me state categorically that no government has ever invested in security like this present government. Um, indeed, uh, our infrastructure has been improved greatly. The surveillance systems has also been improved. Um, for the first time in the history of the country, we have a national security strategy. In fact, when uh, Nana was first sworn in as president, one of the first appointments he made was the National Security Minister, which didn't exist in the previous administration, which obviously is indicative of the importance he attaches to security. The uh, Security and Intelligence Agencies Act has been amended now. As uh, you all know, the 
the role of national investigation is now national intelligence bureau. bureau yeah. And the role of national communication is now national signals bureau. And quite a number of changes have been made to that document. The national security cyber, uh, national cyber security policy has also been amended. And for the first time again in the history of the country, we have a national cyber security advisor government. Okay, a lot of purchases, I mean, procurements have been made for uh, the police and the military, countless vehicles and all that. But as a project officer. I am not very enthused about I did this, I did that. Mm -hmm. What I am enthused about is the outcome. Right. So in the midst of all of this, how has it translated in the security situation on the ground? And you know, the, 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 the statistics are there. It's online for all to see, published by even the Ghana Police Service. For example, in 2017, there was an all-decade high in the number of murders in the country, 609. And these are just reported murder cases. So you can imagine those ones we enter the room and see them with rat boys beside them, and we think that uh, they've, they've committed suicide and straight up. As Muslim as we are, we just bury the person. And uh, sometimes we says we don't uh, subject the person to any autopsy. Right. Just take the person to the park and the next minute we are burying the person. Or we see someone dangling from a tree hanged. We all, we, immediately you see such a thing, you feel the person has committed suicide. Forgetting that someone can kill and stage the crime scene to look like suicide, okay? For the first quarter of this year, We've had a surge in the murder rates, okay, as compared to the same period last year. It went up by close to 30%. And we quite have a, a number of uh, uh, unresolved murder cases, uh, some of which are high profile. So, so Adib, just, Adib, just, 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 just to interject briefly. Uh, you paint quite a picture. Yes, we're having the murders happening. And uh, on the other hand, we've had these retooling of some state institutions, the BNI for the NIB and all of that. Maybe it's, uh, in a way, a change in name only because uh, the effect, the proper effect, which you are speaking of, may not be seen in terms of addressing the crime rates, the murder rates, and other, other bits in there. Why is that? Why do you feel that is happening? Well, it's, it's a number of reasons. Um, one of it is the fact that we have not been able to improve the investigation processes. I mean, I have had the opportunity to speak with a number of uh, CID friends of mine who lament over the fact that most of the processes involved in criminal investigation is manual. Um, we have the systems in place. Before you acquire a passport, your biometrics is taken, right? Uh, the National Identification Authority, the uh, uh, Ghana card, before you acquire it, you would have your biometrics taken. Uh, National Health Insurance, SNITS, uh, even the full test register is biometric. So why don't we integrate all of these systems, as has been promised in the past by the Vice President, and make it available under strict conditions to law enforcement. So when they get to a crime scene, they are also able to. They are, we are also able to train them to protect the integrity of crimes. Because in Ghana, usually first responders are the police. Mm. Unfortunately, not all of them have the privilege of getting trained on how to preserve crimes. And they get there, and they are the first to contaminate it by touching things without gloves, stepping all over the place, and even uh, touching certain things that would be of importance to the investigation. True. Sometimes you see mm. criminals paraded on TV and they are guns seized and you see the officers arranging the guns without gloves, you know. So all of it is due to the lack of training. And with the systems, the proper systems in place, we'll be able to make sense of the myriad of investigations that is right before us. I spoke with lawyer friends and judges uh, who are, of course, friends of mine, and they also complain about the fact that most of the criminal uh, cases that comes before them, okay, is usually based on circumstantial evidence, not hard, solid, or watertight evidence that would uh, uh, prove beyond reasonable doubt that the suspect is the one who perpetrated the crime. Yeah. So 
when they come, they say, oh, he was there at the point the crime was perpetrated. Or in the past, he threatened he would kill her. And she's dead. So <laughs> he, he killed her. But with these systems in place, forensic science, at least we should be able to uh, investigate more thoroughly and have the proper evidence so these bad guys are not thrown back into the streets to continue their activities. And okay. mind you, someone is arrested in Tamale for an offense, he's detained for some time. When released, he comes to Accra, perpetrates the same crime. Police arrest him and they're not able to tell that this is a man who, or a gentleman who has perpetrated similar crimes elsewhere in the past. But when you go to other jurisdictions, they have all the systems in even the police cruisers. A police officer would stop you just using your social security number or your driver's license. Mm. Would sit in the cruiser and every information about you is there. Whether you are on parole and you are violating it, whether there is an indictment or you whether you are wanted, every information is there. So until so we get those systems in place, um, improving the, the, the security situation would be elusive because mostly criminals before they perpetrate their crime are able to juxtapose the risk and the reward factor so if right. he realizes that the probability of me getting caught is low he'll be incentivized into okay. perpetrating that crime but once you improve the investigation processes and he feels that now there are systems in place and if i perpetrate this crime the likelihood that i'll be caught is high he'll be yeah. Okay. Tadeep, so it's a very important point that you make right there. The 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 risk factor and uh, if the risk factor is low for these criminals as far as their investigations are concerned or their uh, records are concerned then we shall continue seeing some of these but but the point to be made is it it would appear that the acting igp uh, dr dampari has his work cut out for him he stepped in at a time when the, there have been quite a number of you know security related incidents how do you feel he's fared so far in in all of these happenings i mean one thing that i was saying that stands out for me is the fact that he is offering psychological helps to some of those who have been traumatized to uh, the abyssin victims and all of that but beyond that uh, how efficient or effective do you feel he has been and what are some of the things you want to see dr dampari doing within the next few weeks well obviously um dr dampari is a very experienced person and his um, uh, credibility or credentials cannot be questioned. Mm. Um, I am, I have so much confidence in him and so far he's, he's proven that yes indeed uh, he's, he's up to the task. Um, he's commissioned horse patrols uh, to bring police into the communities but I'm hoping that it goes beyond the horses and uh, would resort to the use of uh, bicycles as has been done in the past unfortunately uh, those bicycles that were donated to us by some donors uh, have been left to rot. Um, he's also dispatched some officers to some parts of the country, especially the Bono region area, to address the speed of highway robberies there. Um, psychological you know, services, I mean, this is something that we've not really thought of in the past, especially when the temporary uh, incident happened. I mean, nobody. People they were not even communicating with the families. It was later the families uh, came out with a series of uh, communiques and you know interviews, uh, lamenting over the fact that nobody seems to say anything to them. So I think that it is a giant step in the right direction. We've also seen him go on patrols uh, with, with his men, and I have also witnessed him go around the country to familiarize himself with operations and you know movements have been made you know within the top excellence of the Ghana police service and i think it's also another giant step but i'm hoping that um he would he would build confidence you know in the police amongst the civilian population in recent times a lot of Ghanaians seem to have lost confidence in the police i remember recently a casual police spokesperson complained that mostly people don't report crimes to the police. And it's a fact. And I'm surprised she said it because it's an indictment of police when people don't report crimes to you. Obviously, there's something wrong somewhere. I have had a friend who's a victim of robbery. She never reported to the police. I asked why, because it's a serious offense. And he asked me with them, to what end? So, I mean, this is all a manifestation of the level of, you know, low, so to speak, trust and confidence people have in the police. Mm. And he has to build that confidence. These days, when you report crimes to the police, I'm sure 
mostly they look at your face before attending to you. Uh, Sometimes you are asked that, 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 that's, 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 a, that's a very interesting point you make as you wrap. Why, why would you say that? That the police look at your face before they, they, they act? Oh, I know personally, you know, I receive a lot of calls from people complaining about them being victims and reporting to the police and nobody doing anything about it. Look, you mm. have no idea the level, the level of nonchalance, the level of indifference. Mm. Some police stations exhibit towards people who come to report cases. But once you get there and you prove that, yeah, you are also a big man, then they give you the attention instead. And in criminology, there's what we call broken glass theory, meaning as minor as an offense, it is to break a glass. If no action is taken, okay, the next time it will be a human life lost. So right, it is important right, that right. police is equal. Okay, attention to all issues brought before them, oblivion of the person standing in society. Else, next time, trust me, next time, they will take matters into their own hands and we didn't rely on the police whatsoever. And we need to improve on the witness protection regime. That is very important. Okay. Many people are not motivated to report crimes to the police because we, you know, we live with these criminals. They are our partners, okay? We went with them. We hang around at beer bars with them and all that. We might have reasons to suspect what they are engaged in. But you report to the police the next minute, the whole community knows that you are the mole, you are the rat amongst us, okay? So if we are able to improve on the witness protection regime, we will have a lot more guardians willing to give out information to the police. By the way, most of the intelligence they get are from civilian sources, okay? So if we are able to encourage it and protect persons who give out information to the police, we will have a lot more guardians giving out information. And point, point, well made. Point, point, point well made, uh, Adib Sani, and that's a crucial uh, bit that you, you, you'll end with us on, the bit about information and police intelligence. Uh, Adib Sani is a security analyst. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. We take a brief break. When we return, we come back into the studio as we wrap on Beyond the Headlines. Do say. Welcome back on Beyond the Headlines right here on Prime Morning. And we've been joined by George AC, who is head of communications at NATMO. He also joins the conversation. Uh, George, a very good morning to you. Yeah, good morning. Thank you for joining us. It's a pleasure. I know it's been a tricky morning. Yeah. It's been a tricky one, but thank you for making the time anyway. So we're going to make this uh, Onassis. Yeah, what happened? Onassis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just hold our horses. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're, really, we're going to make this. Any, any Onassis, thank you very much. We're going to make this as, as brief as possible okay. on the back of uh, what time we have left to play with. We've been talking about the security situation even before we get to your work, which would uh, border on, you know, aiding people as far as what we've seen in the north and all of that is concerned. Yeah. We've been speaking about the security situation and I'm looking uh, right now at the story of those 22 herdsmen arrested for illegally possessing uh, firearms in Donkokrum. All of these happenings on the, on the back of, you know, the murder of that journalist and all of that, it, it paints quite a, a serious security situation. I was just engaging Adib Sani and he also has his own concerns. What would you say as far as the security situation is concerned? How do we get out of this quagmire? Yeah, thank you. Uh, good morning to you. Good morning to my colleague and our viewers. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get these reportage, uh, it, it doesn't uh, send a good signal to all of us. And, and as a government, uh, it's our duty uh, to be up and doing as far as uh, combating uh, crimes and security issues are concerned and what you just said uh, if it is reported today because of social media any little this thing you know goes viral and and in the international circles especially at a time where we are pushing for foreign direct investments and mm. others international. It puts a dent on our image, doesn't yes, it? Yes, mm. and so when people begin to see that international journalism was made it here, uh, it sends the wrong signal. And then again, uh, this Fulani issue, if people begin to see that a lot of people are having arms unregistered, mm. okay, uh, and, and, and possessing them and moving about freely, uh, especially when they also know that such people are mostly involved in criminal conducts, armed robbery on our highways and co. Uh, it also sends the wrong signal. So the police uh, need to uh, be more proactive and preemptive of, of crime. And, and the police will only succeed in that aspect if they work in tandem with informants. Mm -hmm. I've said many times I'm a barracks boy, and, and I know how the informants 
individual civilians have helped the police uh, in combating crime, okay? They get privy, they get to know certain actions by individuals who are attempting to commit crime, and then they alert the police. Mm -hmm. And so they are able to stop them before. And so we need these informants. But the unfortunate thing is that most times, these informants are then their names and identity get leaked, mm. okay? And then- and that is a problem that we have within, to deal with. Yes, Adib Sani was just yes, mentioning that yes, situation yes, as yes. well. So that's, that's worrying. And if people, that leads to what Adib said, mistrust of the police, mm. okay? If, if the public begins to mistrust the police, it becomes a big problem for combating crime. You okay. get it. And but so that's, that's uh, we need to be up and doing. And I'm excited about the uh, steps taken by the IGP so right. far. Right. So far, he's getting involved. He's doing what needs to be done. And, and as Adib said, this is to engender public confidence. Okay. In now, the now let, let's, let's talk about you know, the, the, the security operators from the standpoint of what you as government are doing to aid the system. Yes, Adib mentioned that in terms of resources, uh, this administration has done quite a bit in terms of resourcing the police. But we also know that in terms of uh, you know the the police to citizen ratio, for example. Yeah. We're still we've still not met UN standards of one to about five hundred. We're getting there. Yes, we're getting there. But in in the meantime, there's a lot of crime, which shows that the gap is becoming problematic. Yeah. We, we don't have adequate human resource. Then again, there are the logistics. We're still far behind, even in terms of something as basic as patrol vehicles and all of that. What is your administration doing, or what are you willing to do to mitigate the situation? Well, this, this, this administration, as Adib said, uh, has been uh, uh, very phenomenal in, in resource or retooling uh, the security forces, especially the police. Uh, you know, I'm under the interior ministry. Mm -hmm. uh, so we know that since we came, uh, over 600 vehicles has been given to the police and, and uh, other, you know, bulletproofs. We said about, I think, is it 4,000 or so, which is not enough anyway. But uh, we on course in, in getting them the resources to be able to go out there to combat crime. Uh, that aside, as we speak, you spoke about the UN standard one is to 500, and we are around one is to 750 or 775. One is to 800, the last time no, I checked. Well, the last I checked is one is to 775. Mm. Okay, that's from the report of the. That's, the, that, that's uh, still very close yes, to 800. Yes, close to 800. Mm. Uh, we, we, but fortunately, as we speak, there's been uh, a clearance given for the recruitment of some, I think, 2,000 police officers, mm. and totally the security are in about 11,800 uh, people to be recruited. And that is also going to be down there. That's the, so, and, and another thing which I think they are doing a bit well, as for government, we are doing uh, what we referred. We even have the, it's not been done because you asked me of the intents as well. Uh, getting helis for the police force. Mm. You get it. We are for helis for the police force. It's, it's a good thing that we need to. When you uh, say helis, uh, just to break it down, are you yes. talking of helicopters? Yes, helicopters. Sorry, <laughs> helicopters. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> just to break it down. Someone yeah. will be yeah, listening no, 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 and understand I'm what you're saying. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. <laughs> so, that, there's a good move and and you know marine uh, crime is also coming up you yeah. know especially the piracy the and, all and those things exactly. so that arena is also being looked at and so uh, I think this government is is doing a lot to support the police to be able to deliver uh, on their mandate uh, but then it's up to us and then the policemen themselves to be able to up the against to be uh, able to be ahead of crime the criminals okay. so as far as you, what you're saying is concerned you feel your administration has done enough and Phenomenal. the buck now remains with the police service uh, uh, to deliver the yeah, goods. They need to do In more. a nutshell. Yes. Okay. Yes. We, we, we continue the conversation. You can also share with us uh, via social media what you think about the state of security or the state of insecurity in the country and what you think ought to be done, whether you are even satisfied with some of the remedial measures being adopted so far. But let's quickly segue into another matter of great concern and that is how uh, hopefully we shall wrap the conversation. Thankfully, you are tied to NADMO. Yeah. And these are very interesting times because at this point in time, we have the Bagri Dam spillage creating chaos, I'm sorry, in the northern belt of the country. Yeah. We have the flooding situation as well recently in Tamale, five hours, and it's not good. Homes, shops, people's facilities submerged. It's a terrible situation. We'll be hearing uh, shortly, God willing, from uh, Martina Bruguri, our northern regional correspondent. But what is your take on, on these matters? Year in, year out, the floods come. I've always said this. I think it was a Canadian uh, many years ago who was actually betting for about two, three years that there would be flooding in Accra. And guess what? Each year, he won his bet until they canceled that kind of bet. <laughs> Each year, the man won 
tens of thousands of dollars. Why does it have to be so? The battery dam, since 1999, we've had this problem. Till 2021, 22 years on. What are we doing? Yeah, the, the good news is government is committed to um, uh, building the Bagri Dam. Uh, steps have been taken since the president cut the I'm sorry, but that promise wasn't made just recently. It wasn't made just yesterday. It's been quite a while. It's close to $1 billion that we said would pump good, into that. Good. It's not seen the light of day. What is that coming? A lot of work is ongoing. Uh, you don't just wake up and build uh, a dam of such magnitude, just like that. A lot of things But a promise was in. made. Yes, and the promise and is it was supposed to be out. Things were supposed to be done before this current spill. Village. Some things were supposed to be initiated. Yeah, and, Nothing and they has are been doing done. it. And they are doing a lot what of work. Is, what, what is being done? To, speak to the PRO of the uh, Voter River Authority. Uh, you mm. get to know. Uh, land acquisition and all know? that. You get it. So there are processes. So and land acquisition to, alone has taken this long? Mm. They need to resettle about eight communities in the arena. Okay? Mm. They need to do that. Acquire all these. Over 11,000 hectares of land. Mm. Okay? It's a vast area. Look at the volume of water that is spilled from the Bagri Dam. Mm. And what comes in. If you've had, the, I've had the opportunity to have an aerial view of that, you know, and it's like almost all the five regions are submerged under water when the time comes. And coincidentally, we were hoping that this year is not going to coincide with the heavy rains here. But unfortunately, yesterday it started, okay? And so any moment from now as we speak, they can begin the spillage. And, and when it coincides with this, it's going to aggravate the situation. And so that's it. But, but I'm but, excited but, but George, that governments... George, a, a quick point there. Isn't that a lack of proper planning? You know why? We know the Bagway Dam spillage owing to the same weather patterns that we have across the sub-region. And Burkina Faso is just our next door neighbor. We always know when you go down in history, it is always between the months of August and September. We also know of our rainy season, which has changed over time. It falls within this month. So if you tell me that we're hoping it wouldn't coincide, that smacks of a bit of improper planning. Oh, no, no, no. We, we are aware. We've planned. We've prepared. But what can you do? But we've caught pants down. Ma no, we've not been caught pants. We know that's what it's going to be until the Bagri Dam is constructed. Mm. What are we go we're going to be managing you the mean situation? The Pualugu Dam. Sorry, the Pualugu Dam. Mm. Until it is constructed to take a volume or a chunk of the uh, flood waters, we have to be managing the situation. And management of the situation is what we are doing. In the and meantime, while you're managing the situation, move. year in, year out, people are dying. You know that? Oh, yes. In so 2018, so we in one, one incident, about yeah. 30 plus people died. We, 2018, we, we, 2019, people died, people lost property, farmland, people lost houses and all of that. We are back to square one. No, we, we're managing the situation, early warning, sensitization, uh, uh, preparedness plans and, and mitigating measures that are put in place uh, to save as many lives as possible. Mm. But the unfortunate thing is because the land closer to the banks of the white water and the black water are more fertile, mm. okay, so the people prefer to farm there, mm. okay, and so at the time you ask them to move, if they've not harvested their crops, sometimes they're a bit adamant, mm. okay, in moving, and that's been some of the challenges but largely they've been cooperating with us in these move to get them to safer and higher uh, places and so that's going back the race is in and then uh, the spillage if it starts any moment it takes about three days to hit uh, upper east mm. and then about seven to nine days to get to the other part yeah, and right. then so all these were we need to be able to move people to safer places and the chiefs and, and opinion leaders and assembly people are working in tandem with NADMO to succeed uh, in this move so yes until my brother the uh, Pualugu Dam is going we, I will urge government to expedite action uh, on the construction okay. of the Pualugu my, Dam. My, it's my, very important to save my, lives. My, and my, 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 my last bit to you, since you are with NADMO, uh, it has happened again this year. So what relief efforts are being put in place to help some of these people who are suffering the brunt of both the spillage and the, and, the, and the flooding. Please uh, just yeah, make that definitely. very Yeah, definitely. They lose livelihoods as a result of that. Uh, not more did pre-positioning of uh, items uh, before now in all the five uh, northern regions. The Upper West uh, suffered a major blow, uh, and so they had to use some, but we've done restocking. And so, okay. yes, we have some relief items uh, pre-positioned as soon as... Uh, can we you be more specific? Just very briefly, can you be more specific? Relief That's items, what, what do you like? Oh, rice, rice, oil, <laughs> yeah. tomato, blankets, <laughs> plastic things, all things that will make a stranded person oh God, a bit it. comfortable in the interim.
That okay. is what we are doing. It's, it's, it's a disaster situation. You're not there to make people live their normal, comfortable lives, okay? You're there to support them, and that is what we have put in place. Uh, it's a UN standard, the kind of relief things you need give to such people at a time, and then the quantum and all that, okay? okay. It's a UN standard that we are following. And so, yes, that's what we, we have all these items there to support them uh, as and when uh, we are hit, and they are stranded. Thank you very much, uh, George AC is Head of Communication. Uh, with uh, the National Disaster Management Organization. We also have joining the conversation. Onassis, you will have no, no, another, uh, another uh, turn. Uh, love, love you you, you, have, you have the chunk of uh, time to speak on some yeah, of no, 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 I'm sorry, but let me put this on record. Let me put this on record. I got here late because I was given eight yeah, So you needed to start. I was given you, eight eight you needed eight to apologize. No, I don't have to apologize. They gave me time. Onassis, so gentlemen, thank you very much. George is head of the I didn't believe you do programs like this. So when they say joy prayer, I asked about three times. <laughs> right. Well, we do. Yes. We do very much. Thank you very much. Thank Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Head of communications with NADMO. <laughs> or NASIS. Kobe is a deputy Ashanti regional youth organizer of the NDC. Thank you uh, for staying with us on you, Beyond you the you Headlines. Really should, We're talking really health when <laughs> we return. Do stay with us on Prime Morning. <laughs> yeah.